You were listening to your radio at a high volume. Yes, what's the big problem? Can't the man listen to his radio in peace? Isn't this a free country? I truly believe Larry has no idea what the problem here is. Charge. Can you believe a word this fucking witness says? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'll pretty much take over charge for a while until you get back. Oh, all right. Come back. All right, go right ahead. Anyway, go ahead, Bonnie. All right. All right. What he heard was probably nothing more than a bunch of... All right. What he heard was probably nothing more than a fucking drum beat from the, from the stupid radio. True enough, it is difficult to believe this testimony. Wait, Your Honor! The witness said he remembers exactly what the DC what the DJ said when he heard the gunshot. Excuse me, DJ, I was born in the 18th century, right? An announcer. The guy who says things on the radio. Anyway, what this means is when he heard the sound, no music was playing. The DJ only talks between songs. So so he could have heard a gunshot from the lake. I'd like to cross-examine the witness, Your Honor. Very well, Mr. Roy. I can't believe I'm continuing this charade. All right. Oh, this is a charade, all right. I mean, it is. All right, so yeah, pretty much as uh, Phoenix said, yeah, the only uh, statement you just need to uh, press is this one right here about the DJ. What did he, uh, what did she say? Mr. Ron. Pointless, please cease these pointless questions. What possible good could no one want to pray your DJs and do us? Indeed, Mr. Ron Carver has a point. I'll allow the question only if you say some reason why we should care. Eh, actually, you know what? We don't care. Fuck it, or it should be care. <laughs> we, sh we should care. <laughs> we should care, Your Honor. Of course we should. Why? Uh, well, how do you know we don't ask, huh? Fine, very well. Mr. So Woods, please testify to the court. What was the radio announcer say when you heard the gunshot? And this is a new line, so go ahead and read. Just when, just when she said, Hey, it's almost Christmas. I heard you gun, I heard you gunshot. Oh, that's a little interesting because let's take a look at this photo in a sec. Larry, are you absolutely sure what you're saying is correct? Huh? What's with that face? You look scary, dude. Hey, if you're trying to scare me, you better know I don't scare that easily. Is something about him, Mr. Roy? Your Honor, did you hear what the witness just said? DJ said, hey, it's almost Christmas, when he heard the gunshot. Indeed, huh? Almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas. There's your meme for today, everybody. Do you, do you realize what this means? When he heard the gunshot, it was still Christmas Eve. That would seem to be the case, yes. But he should have heard that gunshot after midnight. This photograph is irrefutable proof of this fact. Let's see what let's see what the time was. Let's see what the time was on the photo taken when the gun triggered Miss Hart's camera. December 25th, 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. Is, this is a clear contradiction, Your Honor. Order, order! What does this mean? Two prior witnesses heard gunshots after midnight. However, this witness says he heard a gunshot before midnight. Judge, the answer is simple. The current witness is plainly mistaken. Just look at him. Suspicious. What? 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 Well, oh yeah, sorry about that. Well, Mr. Roy, what do you think about Mr. Butts' claim that he heard a gunshot before midnight? Is Larry right or wrong? What do you think? Alright, let me think about this for a second. Alrighty. Well, alright, yeah. Actually, think about this and think about another evidence that we recently just got before the trial. Hmm. Let me think. Well, well actually, not just a recent evidence, but think about another certain evidence that we literally found out about on the first day of the trial as well, too. 
Can you open the tab so I can take a look? Uh, sure. Alright, let's take a look. So, we've got the... Obviously not bad. Yeah, we've got uh, the badge, we've got the camera. we got the autopsy report sometime on the 24th or 25th. Uh, we got the photo, which we just presented. Uh, we got another photo taken on Christmas Eve at 11.50 p.m. And then we got Missy Faye. We got Gordy. We got the map of Four Lake. Uh, pistol bullet. And we got the gun itself. It was fired three times. And then we got the description for two gunshots. Metal detector, poly, and the DL6 stuff. Mm, let's go one by one. Alrighty. So here's a pistol again, fired three times. What do you think about Mr. Butts' claim he heard? He, he heard a gunshot before midnight. So the, uh, the, so the pistol was fired three times. And what we know so far is that only uh, only both Lada and uh, only both Lada and the old man only heard two out of the three shots. And Larry claimed he only heard one out of the three shots. I think so. Well, I, I think he must have heard the third one then. Alrighty, yeah, okay, yeah. So, do you think that he's telling the truth then? I think so. Alright, let's take a look. Yes. Larry's not mistaken, Your Honor. He heard a gunshot before midnight. Intriguing. I'm assuming you have evidence for this wild claim. Show me evidence there was a gunshot before midnight. Alright, now actually there is two pieces of evidence you can present, and uh, we already went through one of them, which is the gun itself. So, we'll start with that first. Take that. This is my evidence! Whoa, man, I can't wait, wait that thing. Or what, but... Yeah, now give me that not guilty verdict, Your Honor. <laughs> Something about this pistol was bothering me, Your Honor. Both of the witnesses who testified yesterday heard two gunshots. However, the murder weapon was fired three times. When then was the last shot fired? Only now have I realized the truth. That the, dirt, that the third shot was the shot Larry heard just before midnight. Order, order. I guess that will make sense out of yesterday's testimonies. You waste our time again with your empty statements. Yes, the pistol was fired three times. But do you have any proof that it was fired before midnight? Do you have proof that the witness didn't just think he heard something? Hey, well, Mr. Roy, there's no turning back now. You have evidence that proves that there was a gunshot before midnight. Do you have evidence that proves Mr. Buzz wasn't just hearing things? So do we have evidence that there was a gunshot before midnight? Let's have a look. Alrighty, so again, we got the camera itself. So it takes pictures when a loud noise is deducted, which is true, based on this photo right here, because it, it was taken like 15 minutes after midnight on Christmas Day. But then, we also have another photo that Lana said that, uh, her camera also took a day, a day before Christmas. The camera? Well, I mean, like, not just the camera, but basically, it's this photo itself. Oh. Yeah, you'll see. Look at this photograph. photograph! This was taken by our witness yesterday, Miss Lana Hart, with her automatic camera. Huh. The time step, uh, the time step on the photo reads December 24th, 11.50 p.m. Oh, yeah? <laughs> but there's nothing on the lake in this picture. Your Honor, the real issue here is not why nothing is shown in this photograph, it is why this photograph exists at all. What do you mean? Your Honor, this photograph was taken by an automatic camera. That camera was set to go off and respond to loud noises. Aha! Uh -huh. Correct. There was a loud noise on the lake on 11.50 p.m. This was take. This was the photo- This was why- Yeah, that is why this photograph was taken. In other words, there was a gunshot at the time that Larry claims. Order, order. It wouldn't make sense of the evidence we've seen so far. However, this leads me to wonder exactly what did happen on the night of the lake. Exactly. 
If this is true, then there were two sets of gunshots separated by 25 minutes. One at 11.50, one at 11.50, another, another 50 minutes after midnight. Why I ask, why I ask you, why? Uh-oh, I better think of something quick. Wait a second. Gunshots separated by 25 minutes? Ah! Let's let's run, Nick. I have it! I have it! Huh? Remember, remember the case with the steel samurai? You know, the one you keep saying as boring? Huh? Yeah, of course I remember. The, the murderer in this case had the same idea as the murderer in that case. What do you mean? Maya. Yes? If we don't figure this out now, we'll never overturn Ashworth's guilty verdict. I've got a hunch, and I'm gonna run with it. Hi. I mean... Is this safe? Safe? We've already gotten a guilty verdict. We have nothing to lose. You just watch, and let me know if I say anything that sounds fishy, okay? Right, Nick. Your order? Yours, Mr. Roy? The testimony just now has cleared up this entire case. What do you mean, Mr. Roy? So you, so you finally realized the truth. There can be no other murderer than he than there can be no other murder here than Mr. Ma, uh, Mr. Myers Edgeworth himself. Ron Von Karma, a man was shot that night, but it wasn't Edgeworth who did the shooting. Listen, rookie. Take a deep breath and consider the facts. At the time of the murder, one boat was on that lake. That was the, that was during the witness's photograph. The defendant, Edgeworth, and the victim, Robert Hammond, were on the on that boat. There was a gunshot fired on that boat, and Robert Hammond fell into the lake. The distance of the shooting was one meter. It couldn't happen suicide. Well, the guilty party has to be the other man. The guilty party has to be the other man on that boat. Well, I admit, it is hard to imagine any other possibility. Yes, but this assumes that the victim was shot at 15 minutes after midnight. What do you mean by that, Mr. Wright? We have photographic evidence at the time of the shooting. Time step on the photo reads all 15 minutes. But Larry heard a gunshot 25 minutes before that. Robert Hammond was killed. Robert Hammond was killed then, 25 minutes before the shot on the lake. That's the only way that Eshworth could be innocent. Mr. Wright, are you quite mad? Explain where the two men on explain who the two men on the boat are. Murderer, murderer and Hammond, Ashworth and the Murderer, or Ashworth and Hammond? Uh. Well, we know. Uh, well, Edgeworth we know automatically that Ashworth uh, that Ashworth is in the boat, no matter what. But now the question becomes: Was he with Hammond or the Murderer? I think it's Hammond. You think Hammond? Well, why do you, uh, uh, why, do you uh, why do you think Hammond? Well, there's a lack. Well, well, well. The victim was Hammond. We already know that. I mean, yeah, the victim was Hammond and such. So that means, like, if it was Ashworth and Hammond, and the victim was Hammond, then technically that would mean that, like, Ashworth had to be the one that shoot Hammond. Because we because we already ruled out that it wasn't a suicide. Ashworth and the murderer, then. Yeah. Of course, it was Ashworth and the murderer. After the murderer killed Robert Hammond at 11.50, he assumed the guise of Mr. Hammond and met Edgeworth. What? Are you serious? Yes, Edgeworth won't tell us why he went to the lake that night. However, I have a hunch. That night, Robert Hammond called Edgeworth to the lake. Now, Edgeworth didn't know Robert Hammond's face that well. 
That's why he didn't suspect anything when the murderer took Robert Hammond's place. I'm not sure what to make of all this. Ludicrous. So, Roy, tell us the name of the murderer then. The murderer's name? Roy. It's. Ashworth, Bottom Heart, or. I don't know. I, I, I just like accusing people <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> One more time. Say one more time. I, I mean, like, I don't know. I just like accusing people for no reason. Yeah, I mean, we can literally take, I don't know. <laughs> well, uh, well, whatever. Like, you know, we, we, we don't want to accuse Edgeworth. And, I mean, so far, does Lala really have any reason for wanting to kill Hammond at all? Because, I mean, like, well, she wasn't Lala, at the boat there's either. absolute. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know who the murderer is. Actually, I don't know the murderer's <laughs> name. You don't know? Bah, I dare you waste my goddamn time. I don't know because he never told us. The murderer is the caretaker of the boat shop, that old man. At 11.50, he was the one who killed Robert Hammond. Caretaker of the boat shop? Where did he do this? There weren't any, there weren't any boats on the lake. Why would he have to go all the way out in the lake just to shoot someone? May I suggest that the real scene of this crime was not in a boat? What? Well then, where did the murder take place? So to judge where the murder really took place. Well, if it was not in a boat, where, uh, where could it, uh, where could it take, uh, where could the caretaker have really murdered Hammond then? From the shop. Right. I think. <laughs> Here, of course, the boat shop where he lives. That way, he could meet the victim without anyone seeing. Do you have proof that the boat was? Do, do you have proof that the boat shop was the scene of the crime? Recall Larry's testimony, if you will. All right, let me just. Uh... That night, he was out on the lake in the boat, searching for something. And he crashed into the other boat and died. <laughs> he finds it and returns the boat. I didn't know. No, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It went, uh, uh, honestly, it wouldn't be the first time because, yeah, I guess, yeah, to be fair, like, yeah, these new cats, yeah, they like to run around and everything, so. You're fine. You're fine. Anyway, then, just as he's. Then, just as he's starting to head for home, he hears a gunshot. He heard a gunshot, Your Honor, even though he was wearing headphones at the time. In other words, the gunshot was very, very close by. And where would that be if he had just returned the boat? The boat shop. Mr. Wright, what happened that night on Court Lake? We saw the court from the beginning. Yes, Your Honor. Nick, are you sure about this? Um, not really. But I think if I start at the very beginning, and I take it slow, I might just be able to figure this out. That night, the caretaker of the boat shop called Robert Hammond to his shop. <sighs> that was around 11.50. This was when the gunshot that Larry heard was fired. After that, the caretaker put on Robert Hammond's coat. He became Robert Hammond. Then he got in a boat with Edgeworth and went into the middle of the lake. The boat shop caretaker. Yeah, uh, I, I was gonna wait for you to see if you wanted to do this. Do the boat shop okay. caretaker. Okay. The boat shop taker, obviously. Of course, it was the murderer who shot the pistol. He shot twice. Both Miss Edgeworth on purpose. Wait a minute. Yes? Why would he shoot twice if he didn't mean to hit anyone? Uh, details, details. No, it's Mr. Wright. The moment you run out of your explanations is the moment you lose. Tell, Tell us why the murderer had to fire, fire twice. Because the first shot missed or he wanted to create a witness? To create a witness. Hey, what about you, Bonnie? To create a witness, yeah. I believe you shot twice. Create a witness, Your Honor. Create a witness? The murderer lifts his pistol and fires one shot. That ensures that anyone who heard the shot would look at the lake. In 
indeed. Miss Hart did, did exactly that after after hearing the first gunshot. Next, Murder waits a bit and he fires again. Then. The murderer jumps from the boat himself, leaving the pistol and the boat behind. Let's see. With someone looking from the edge of the lake. It would appear that one of the men has shot the other. The murderer didn't know about the automatic camera, of course. That's why he shot twice to draw attention to the boat. Once you realize that, once you realize that, everything else falls into place. Old shop caretaker swam back to his shop. Then he put Mr. Hammond's wet coat back on the body and threw the body into the lake. That is what happened, Your Honor. These are the events of that of that transpired that night on Gord Lake. That's stupid. Stupid, 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 stupid. Boil up. Bring out the winners from before. The boat shop caretaker. Quickly. <laughs> Very well. While we are waiting for the caretaker, I would like to ask the defendant Miles Edgeworth a few questions. Edgeworth, please take the stand. Edgeworth, you heard what the defense has said? Yes. Well, why did you go to the lake that night? Well, what I said was mostly correct. Astonishingly so, actually. Yes. Several days ago, I received a letter. The letter was signed Robert Hammond. He asked me to come to court to the sh I mean, not court. He asked me to come to the boat shop by the lake at midnight on Christmas Eve. He said he has something very important to discuss with me. Something important? I'm sorry. I can't say what it was. Uh, it wants to be Bailiff. I'll do it. Okay. Your Honor, sir. Bailiff, we are conducting a trial here. I ask that you remain quiet. The witness has just... <laughs> The witness has disappeared. He isn't at the boat shop either. What? What should I do? Fire the dumbass quickly! We can't allow him to get away! Mr. Bob Karma, the witness has disappeared! Our search warrant has already been issued. It goes without saying that I cannot declare a verdict under these circumstances. I will extend the trial until tomorrow, the final day allowed. I request that the police department utilize utilize all its force to find that witness. Am I understood? One more thing. Just who is that book? The suicide boat shop caretaker. I think his identity has become very important to this trial. I want him, but I want to know who he is. Very well. Where's the turn? Alrighty. Yay, Nick! You did it! Yeah. Well, at least we got out from under that guilty verdict. What about Larry? That was something else. Even while Kara didn't know what to do with his testimony. Larry really, Larry really helped us out. <clears throat> sure, once I sifted through his unique testimony. Still, he does save us. I just wish our cases weren't so down to the wire all the time. I know what you mean. Sometimes I feel like it's... Sometimes I feel, sometimes I feel like it's on us, on trial instead of our clients. Yeah, it's like we're in the middle of a game or something. Hey, Edgeworth. Um, Miss Redsworth? Did you say something? D don't look so pained. I mean, it looks like you're probably going to get off the hook. You could try, you could try some other just a little. Relax, go you try some other just a little? Relax. <laughs> I'm sorry. But I'm afraid it's not over for me yet. What do you mean? Why? There's something that's been troubling me for a long time now. I don't know whether or not to tell you. 
It's worth it. No, there's so little time left. I want to tell you to get off my chest, but... I can't make up my mind. What is this about, Ashworth? It's a nightmare I've had. A memory of a crime that I committed. A crime you committed? A memory of a murder. Da da da! da. Yep. Yep, well guys, we're gonna have to make you wait for what that crime is that Ezra probably committed and such. But yep, uh, alrighty, so yeah, we actually literally just finished up that session in actually two hours, just like I said, so still not all too bad. But uh, yeah, we finished mm -hmm. up both the second day of investigation and second day trial. Alrighty, guys, yep. uh, but uh, actually before we sign off, Barney, what did you think, uh, what did you think, uh, what did you thought about the session? It was a lot of fun. I definitely had a lot of fun. Good. Uh, same. Uh, same here. Uh, same and here. I, and I suffer. And I. And I almost suffer my my. I almost suffer another heart attack. <laughs> Yeah, pretty much. Uh, like I said, yeah, pretty much uh, when a lot of people, you know, first play this uh, case, myself included and everything, like, uh, pretty much as soon as that guilty verdict comes in, like, you know, it really does grab you in and be like, oh shit, did I messed up or something? And as soon as Larry comes in, again, like, uh, much like how the second trial was and um, turning about Samurai and everything, it, it really grabbed you, like, you know, it really did grab you and, and uh, pull you into that uh, twist and such. And I'll just say here right now, the twist is still not over just yet. We still got a lot more twists coming up in the next session and possibly final session. We still don't know yet. Um, uh, but yeah, so uh, pretty much in the uh, next session, we only got a, uh, we only got two parts left into this case. We got the final investigation and the final trial. Now, the final trial itself is a bit of a long trial, I will admit, so pretty much um, if we do want to decide to uh, make the next session a final session, it is very possible that we are going to have to go on longer than two hours and such. Uh, I'm, probably... completely fine with, I'm completely fine with it because I'm going to be completely free from college by the time we do the next session, so I'm, I'm okay with it. All right, well, pretty much if uh, all three of us and everything are free and we fill up that, like, you know, we want to finish up this uh, case and give our final thoughts on this case as well, too, we'll go ahead and do it. Uh, but if we feel like the uh, the investigation took probably a little longer than usual and we want to, you know, take a little break and uh, pretty much uh, save the uh, final trial for next time, that's uh, most likely, that's uh, probably what might happen as well, too, but you guys will know later on down the road. So, yeah, like I said, the uh, next session and everything uh, will, possibly, will possibly be the last session. And if that's the case, then that means we only got one more case left to worry about after this. The, um, pretty much the, uh, bonus case. Another case that has, uh, mixed feelings among the Ace Attorney fans and everything. And, uh, that's another case, like Myself I said. I'm, uh, go ahead. Myself included. <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, pretty much, uh, yeah. So, um, uh, so, yeah. Anyway, uh. Uh, anyway, uh, we don't know when the uh, next session is going to come up and everything, because like I said, holidays are coming up and such, so uh, pretty much um, if we, uh, pretty much uh, the session, uh, we might do a session next week and everything, uh, but if not, then it's, very, then it's very much most likely that the next session might be somewhere after Christmas or after New Year's and everything, so uh, basically uh, just keep an eye out on everything when we're ready to do the next session, and like I said, uh, that session will decide pretty much if we uh, want to finish up the case or pretty much... Um, or pretty much just uh, do one more session just for the final trial itself. So, anyway, guys, this has been Sakura Diesel saying thank you all so much for watching this session of uh, Ace Attorney. If you guys have enjoyed this session, don't forget to hit, don't forget to hit the like button. If you guys want to see more sessions of the uh, Ace Attorney streams and everything, hit that subscribe button as well. Speaking of games, if you guys got any games you want me to try out, leave them in the comments on the YouTube or on my Facebook page. Uh, or you got, uh, or you guys can also check out mine and Bonnie's co-op channel, uh, Review Bros, where pretty much, um, we review movie and TV shows together, or pretty much you can check out my main channel, where I review movie, uh, t TV shows and movies, um, on my own and everything. And pretty much, yeah, also don't forget to check out Barney's and ESM's channels as well, too. Their links will be in the description below. But, anyway, guys, so, yeah, this has been Sakura Diesel with my two good friends. Well, uh, old Teapot 7. And uh, ESM, who is taking a phone call right now. But uh, anyway, yeah, so this is, uh, so yes, it's been Sakura Diesel saying thank you all so much for watching. And we'll see you all at the uh, next session, possible the finale. But again, don't get your hopes up too high. Uh, but just in case, it might be a possible finale or we might have to go one more session. But either way, we'll see you all in the next session with our Turnabout Goodbyes. We'll release to the, we'll release to the final day investigation. So until then, take care, everybody, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.